Welcome to the Melodyne Editor Tour about working with the main tool. The main tool combines the most essential editing functions in a context-sensitive manner. Select it from the toolbar or from the context menu that opens when you right-click in the editing area. With the main tool, move the arrow to a point near the center of a blob and press and hold the mouse button as you drag it upwards or downwards to alter its pitch or else left or right to move it forwards or backwards in time. It's the initial movement, whether vertical or horizontal, that decides whether the pitch or timing of the note is altered. Before changing axis, you must first release the note. If you hold down the Alt key as you drag the note, the pitch or time grid, even if active, will temporarily be ignored, allowing you to position the note exactly where you want it. In the View menu, check the option Show Blob Info. Zoom in on a few individual blobs so that you can study them more closely. Now, as you move the mouse pointer over a blob, thin lines appear indicating the zones in which the main tool performs particular functions. The central area you already know about. Different are the front, back, and upper regions of the blob. As you move the mouse pointer from one of these regions to another, it changes its appearance to emulate whichever of the more specialized tools is most appropriate to that zone, adopting its functions at the same time. Drag the front part of the note to the right or left. Hold down the Alt key as you do so to position the note more finely than the time grid will allow. Now, only the beginning of the note moves. The end remains anchored, so the note is either being stretched or compressed. In the same way, you can move only the rightmost part of the blob corresponding to the end of the note. Notice that as you move the beginning or end of a note in this way, the preceding or following note, if adjacent, is either stretched or compressed by the same amount to avoid either the two notes overlapping or silence appearing between them. This happens whenever a pitch transition between the two notes has been detected. You can deactivate this pitch transition and with it the mutual interdependence of the two notes either using the pitch tool or by simply tearing them apart, which means dragging one of them to a new location. Thereafter, a bracket appears at the point of rupture. This indicates that the two notes are now fully independent. Even if the material is monophonic, you can drag notes that have been torn apart or copied to positions that overlap, thereby creating polyphony. If you move the mouse pointer to the upper part of a note, above the horizontal line, the main tool adopts the appearance and functions of the note separation tool. If you double-click now, you can create a note separation and slice the note in two. Don't be surprised if the two notes that result move apart in pitch. This is because a new tonal center is calculated for each of the newly created notes, and that may differ from the tonal center they shared when they were one note. You can move an existing note separation horizontally with the Note Separation tool. And you can double-click a note separation to get rid of it. In this tour, you have seen how to move complete notes in pitch and time by using the main tool. Also, you have learned how the main tool can act as a note separation tool. Hit pause in your video player if you need more time to read them.